Hey everybody, in both cameras, yet again, no idea if I'm going to stick with this, um, the two camera setup, I mean, um, let's go for Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049, so, I watched the original Blade Runner early in the day yesterday, before work, and then after work, I chilled for a little while, found an 11 p.m. showing that turned out to be a 3D showing, and there were no 2D ones showing at that time, so I actually had to pay out of my pocket um, for Blade Runner 2049. That was late as shit for a really long movie, but I don't regret it. Spoilers, it was good. Uh, so, backtracking first to the original Blade Runner. Um, just right off the bat, I couldn't really take it seriously because I like the show Code Monkeys, and the show Code Monkeys has an episode in which a teddy bear is basically the same thing as the um, character of Roy Batty in the original Blade Runner, to the point that it even does the Tears in Rain speech, kinda. So as soon as I heard, I've seen people or I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Um, I couldn't take the speech seriously, despite how cool it was. I also had heard um, Algalon the Observer's speech from World of Warcraft, which is somewhat similar in that it's just uh, what should be like an uncaring AI that has seen more than humankind will ever see um, just deciding that life is worth living. Uh, let's see. Original Blade Runner. Film noir, but in the future. So, neo-noir. Uh, basically created its own genre. Which, like... It's one of those things where when you go back to look at it... Um, like, yeah, you can... You've seen all this shit before and it's, like, not even that crazy now. But that's because everything has copied it. So it's kind of like a Seinfeld is unfunny type of deal. Uh, nothing really happens in the original Blade Runner. Deckard just goes to decommission, or he goes to retire a few replicants. And by a few, I mean like one every hour of the movie. And that's it. Also, the term Blade Runner has nothing to do... Or, like, the title has nothing to do with the movie. It's literally just a thing that Ridley Scott was like, That sounds fucking cool. I'm gonna buy the rights to that so I can use the name. Um, and then to go back to nothing happening, there is that, like, five or ten minute long scene of Harrison Ford sitting back in a chair like this... Just going, go right, enhance, wait, go left, pull back, enhance, pull back again, like, so that happens for a while. Shit. Editing. Um, so into the theater experience of Blade Runner 2049, like I said, I paid out of my pocket because my movie pass thing had the showtime listed and available for check-in, but it was a 3D showing and movie pass only covers normal showings, so it didn't load enough onto the card for me to be able to cover the ticket cost. So Oh well. Uh oh, there were four guys who keeping in mind that when we purchased our tickets and by we, I mean the audience in general. When we purchased our tickets, we had to pick out a specific seat in the theater, and you could see which seats were already taken, like exactly where they were, so you could plan accordingly as to, oh, I don't want to be bumping elbows with this guy. I will just pick a different row, or pick a few seats down in that row. Uh, so I sat furthest back row, five seats from the far right. So naturally, I get four younger guys come up 
and they sit in seats one through four, and I'm sharing an armrest with this guy. There's no one for like ten seats this way. Uh, and they were all high, and the only reason I know this is because they pretty much all announced at one point or another, yo, I've never been to a movie high before, or I've never been to a 3D movie high before. And I was just like, good fucking God. God damn it. Uh, luckily for me, they all left maybe an hour or an hour and a half into the movie, and I got to just sit there and enjoy myself from then on. Because I kept seeing, like, I don't know what the hell they were doing, but this kept happening. Just flashlight, like, looking over, like, to see if I was, like, to see if anything was going on or something, or maybe they were doing something that required fine dexterity and being able to see at their seat, where it's like, you're in a fucking movie theater, turn that shit off, please. Like, I've been way better about putting my watch into theater mode and silencing my phone and shutting the case so even my always on display doesn't show anything fuck you people um then i've already mentioned that it was at 11 p.m and it was three hours long and i saw it in 3d totally worth seeing it in 3d in my opinion it looks really good and this is i have seen a couple of other movies in 3d since Pacific Rim, but I will definitely say that this one was the most worth it since Pacific Rim. Actually, I think the, the last movie I saw in 3D was Doctor Strange, and this one was definitely more worth seeing in 3D than Doctor Strange was. However, I saw Doctor Strange in 3D the second time that I saw it. Anyways, whatever. So, uh, I don't remember what any of the trailers were. So, the story for both of them, Blade Runner, uh, it basically deals with where, is the, where do you draw the line between this robot is a robot or this robot is a human? Like, just where, where is that line between counts as human life and disposable robot trash? Um, and then the second one, oh, and they... They leave it ambiguous, sort of, as to whether or not Deckard is a replicant in the first one. And they also leave it ambiguous in the second one. So the story of the second one is Ryan Gosling being dreamy in awesome looking environments. And he is confirmed very, very early in the movie to be a replicant. Um, like, his co-workers are calling him Skin Job. <laughs> And he has fuck off Skinner spray painted on his front door. So, yeah. That's, it's just a matter of further going into, is he a real boy? And what's it like for Pinocchio to live his life, basically? Uh, so in 2049, I have the first thing listed, callbacks to Blade Runner 1. First one I have is Enhance. And this is actually not the first one in the movie. But the most noticeable one is, like, very early on, they're analyzing a skeleton under a microscope. And Ryan Gosling's character just keeps... He doesn't ever say the word enhance, I don't think. But it's you can tell it's a callback, because they're flipping back through, like, zoom in, zoom out go around this corner, zoom in, like, it's a crazy 3D microscope, and they're able to explore this, the tiniest crevices of this skeleton by just enhancing more, but then again, 30 years passed from what was already, like, 30 years in the future from when the first one released, so, sure, why, why not, why wouldn't they have such technology? Uh, another callback was... I think it might have just been Hannibal 2, for real, um, placing down origami. In the previous one, they ended it with him placing the unicorn thing to just kind of signal to Deckard, you're getting a head start, get the fuck out of here. And in this one, they just showed him laying down a sheep, and I don't... Or maybe it was a bull. Not entirely sure. 
but the origami thing was there and then never addressed ever again. Uh, obviously, Deckard's whole existence is... I, like, I didn't realize this was supposed to be a sequel. I thought it was just another thing in the universe of that. But it makes sense being a sequel, because um, Harrison Ford's fuckface is in this. So, Deckard's in it. And then, speaking of Deckard, he once again gets saved by a replicant who was just about to kill him. Like, in the first one, uh, Batty fucks with him for a while and is about to kill him, but then he's falling off a building and Batty saves him and then gives the tears and rain speech. In this one, spoilers, K, aka Ryan Gosling, goes to kill Deckard to help out the replicant resistance movement thing. And then instead of killing Deckard, he saves him at the cost of his own life, just like Batty before him. So, final scene is Harrison Ford walking up a set of stairs, uh, Ryan Gosling bleeding out on a staircase, looking up at the sky, and he does no such speech, which is fine, because I wouldn't want them to try and redo that. Uh, the visuals were fucking awesome. Like, the first one's visuals are a thing where you look at it and you're like, okay, everybody since then has done this. And then this one is like, everyone's done this, and now I'm going to show you how it's done, basically. Like, everything... Ah, this, this movie lives in the wide shot. It's crazy. Like, let's see. I'm just coming off of Kingsman. So, Kingsman had a lot of wide shots. But it had a lot of, like, really symmetrical framing. And it made it really weird and artificial. Whereas this one, being about an artificial intelligence, has a bunch of like really organic wide frames where Ryan Gosling will just be placed in a spot in the frame and then there will be things around the frame for you to look at and it's all just kind of organically placed to be really pretty and you're like, ugh, just stop for a minute so I can look at everything that's going on right now. Um... One thing that actually bugged me about the visuals was just a little thing at the end where uh, Ryan's going to save Harrison and the replicant Love, L-U-V, is fighting K. He drowns her by holding her underwater. And mind you, they're in the middle of like a, what seems to be like an ocean, in the middle of a crazy thunderstorm or just really heavy downpour. So the waves are going crazy and they're inside one of those little ship thingies. Uh, and the door is open, so there's waves crashing inside the vehicle. And she's he's holding her under the water, choking her to death. And as the air bubbles are running out, somehow the water gets so stagnant that she can actually see through it to Ryan Gosling's face. And, I mean, I couldn't complain about having that kind of sight as my last view, but goddamn. Uh, and then another thing to discuss about is Joy, the AI intended for the replicants. Or just lonely people to just be like a give-up machine. Um, Joy's opacity is like 90%, so you can always see lights kind of pushing through her from the background and there was one scene where she sort of she calls over a hooker who was a replicant and since she's a hologram she just steps into the hooker and like syncs up her movements but the sync isn't perfect which I actually thought was better and she like anytime Ryan goes to kiss her or she goes to kiss Ryan She's like hover handing him and it's like it's the weirdest case of like hover hand is more it makes more sense than them actually being there and they just turned her opacity down in post like 
you can kind of tell that they did... It seems as though they did at least two separate performances where she does her thing, he does his thing, and they were never on set together. Maybe? And they were just given marks to hit, but it's like, ah! It's cool. It's cool because it looks kind of shitty and not perfect. That's uh, great. Uh, so, let's... Just two things about the audio. Um, I just have Bang listed, which is the sound of Deckard's pistol. It just sounds like a fucking 40k bolt pistol. It's so fucking loud and so overpowered, it's great. Uh, and then I, the only other thing I have listed is Elvis, where there's a scene where Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford are kind of having a shootout slash stealth off in a theater thing. And there's these holograms of Elvis and other entertainers going on. But they're all glitching out, and it's kind of like they're using the the audio of that, like, anytime it actually kicks in, as an opportunity to fire a couple shots. Or at least Harrison Ford is. Ryan Gosling isn't exactly fighting back at this point. Um, so that was really neato. And then, the last section I have is just Ryan Gosling. Mainly, his eye. If you pay attention throughout and this is going to bother me forever now with anything that Ryan Gosling is in. If you pay attention to his left eye, it just kind of goes wherever the hell it wants. Like, his left eye is usually a decent bit more closed than his right eye is. And it's usually pointing somewhere else. It's just something to notice. Because there's a lot of close-ups of his face and you're like, oh boy, where are you looking? Uh, flip the page back over to My Little Pony. Oh, shit. Uh, his coat looked really damn cool. And to a lesser extent, so did Deckard's in the original Blade Runner. And then... I've... The, I think the only other thing that I've seen Ryan Gosling in is Drive. And he was pretty emotionless in Drive, for the most part. He's also emotionless in this. For the most part, he has one scene where he uh, displays extreme emotion. And, uh... Well, this time it makes sense. Actually, it made sense in Drive 2, but... This time it makes sense because he's a robot. So, he's, he's only supposed to obey people. He's not really supposed to have feelings of his own. Uh, that's, like, the whole reason that the replicants were banned in the original one is they would develop their own emotional responses and wind up going on fucking rampages. Um, so, Ryan Gosling being pretty much emotionless in this movie works perfectly. Uh, it works fine in Drive because he's like a murderer slash just perfect at driving. Whatever. But, yeah. Blade Runner 1 is good. Blade Runner 2049 was really, really, really good. And it probably now safely sits at my favorite movie for visuals that I've ever seen. It dethroned Pacific Rim uh, from that. So, hope you all enjoyed it. If you want me to watch anything and review a thing, tell me click the buttons otherwise, and I'll see you all next time we go to the movies.